And I'm so thankful and so grateful for them. Boy, do they have some great music for you today. Get ready. Good morning. morning. How about we greet our friends online? Would you be willing? Let's turn to the camera and let's tell them good morning. And peace be with you. My name is Sheila Gautreau. I am one of your ministers here at Unity of Walnut Creek. It is a pleasure to welcome you to our service. And if you are new to Unity, I offer, extend a wonderful, special welcome and invite you to join us on this positive path for spiritual living away toward the truth, the light, the life, the love, 
and the prosperity that lives within all of us. In unity, prayer is the foundation of everything that we do. It has been going on in our worldwide ministry for over 125 years. Each and every moment, Silent Unity is praying with and for the people of the world. We pray affirmatively. We pray in the yes movement of the power of spirit. And in that vein, join with me as we say our opening statement affirmatively. Together, there is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. Let us take it in for ourselves, breathe it in through our hearts, letting it fill the capacity of our being, knowing that this is the truth for us. And again, there is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life the all-loving goodness of God. And as we hold it for ourselves, we extend it outward. We fill this sanctuary. We allow it to spill over to our friends online, connecting us all together as one. And once more, there is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. Breathing it more into our hearts, we send it far across the oceans and the mountains, connecting with all living things and touching every heart that beats. For this, we are eternally grateful. I am so grateful. Let us say that together. I am so grateful. And so it is. And together we say, Amen. Please remain seated and join the Joyful Heart Singers in our next song. <coughs> Thank you. 
deep breath through your heart as we move into that beautiful peace and deepen our experience of prayer together. Let's take this moment for a time of blessing from our heart ministers. Jeannie. Take a deep breath through your heart. Infinite presence, we open our hearts to feel the love that flows from your mighty stream of good and send it forth to bless unity of Walnut Creek. We bless the members and, members and congregants of our unity ministry and hold the light of peace, joy, and wholeness for all within its circle of sisterhood and brotherhood. May we awaken together the infinite possibilities that lie within the space of like minds and mutual desires for the future and progressive movement of spirit here and now. We trust the guidance and the direction of divine love as it lays the cornerstone for the building of our future. We place our trust in the leadership, staff, and congregation in connecting with your divine wisdom as we journey towards the future of unity of Walnut Creek. We stand upon the promises of Holy Spirit. We know that this ministry is under the power and authority of God, the good, <coughs> omnipotent. And so it is. Taking that deep breath through our hearts. Mother, Father, God, as we are guided into this time of deeper awareness with you, gratefully we journey within and invite the music to call us into that very center of our hearts. of its presence. We're grateful to easily find this divine presence everywhere in our world. To see this divine presence in the exquisite beauty of a flower. The amazing green within the tree. to feel the touch of this divine love caring for us as the breeze upon our cheek. How easy it is in nature to find that all is God when we hear the song of a bird or the laughter of a child. And we are so grateful 
as we grow into this ever-expanding awareness of your divine presence as the care that expresses through a friend the smile or hug of someone within the family and we find ourselves in awe of your presence as the miracle of thought and understanding within mind and heart as the vibrancy of life within our bodies and you are the peace within each of us. You are the stillness of mind. You are the serenity upon our hearts. And you are that which calls us in the stillness. That which lets us for a moment let go of all the doing of, of mind and body to rest in the stillness of your presence. And so we follow this beautiful direction of the psalmist. Be still and know that I am Be still and know that I am. beautiful beloved presence how wonderful it is to experience our oneness with you oneness in stillness oneness in prayer oneness in song oneness in our vision and our touch 
we are so grateful to know at depth that there is only you. So we let this beautiful flow of your presence through our beings expand. We send it out as radiant love, first to our own bodies for healing and wholeness and vitality, to mind and heart that we grow in wisdom and understanding. We radiate this beautiful love of your presence. We send it to each one who is dear to us. It enfolds them, blesses them, heals them, brings peace within the world of feeling and emotion, within the world of thought and guidance, within the relationships one to another. This love flows through our hearts, blessing the spiritual community lifting each one into greater awareness of your goodness. This divine love flows through our hearts to embrace every prayer request brought here. For we know with each, you are enfolded in divine love and lifted to that which is the highest. And this flow of divine love goes forth from this simple place as waves of blessing across the communities in which we live, across our nation, and on to touch and bless the peoples of the world. This divine love flows through our hearts. It's joined by all who join us in prayer, whether in mosque or synagogue, temple or church, where they gathered at home or on the hillsides. For in seeking to know you, we are all one. Mother, Father, God, we send this beautiful love that you are through us to Mother Earth to bless and bring harmony to all her systems. Rain where it is dry, calm where there is storm, blessing to her creatures. And joyously we send this powerful love about the earth so that it touches the heart of every single person in the earth. For you are this love in every heart. And in this love, we are one. Divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. Please join me. Divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. And again, divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world treasuring that beautiful connection with all. Once again, divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world.
by the light of my faith, shining both night and day, shining both night and day. I see God's light guiding you on your way, guiding you on your way. so sound I know that now now is the time to pray now is the time to pray for everything. You guys are so beautiful and filling us with a joyful spirit. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I'm so good to see you guys. Um, and my name is Sian, and it's my pleasure to greet you and highlight upcoming events for you. It's time to catch up on what's going on within our unity community at our town hall meeting today. Lunch will be served following the 11.30 service, followed by our meeting. You won't want to miss Freddie Weber, our guest speaker and performer, the first Sunday in March. Freddie has traveled through the United States presenting her musical comedy, Being Here Now, based on Eckhart Tolle's The Power of Now and A New Earth. Unity will celebrate our first Bring a Friend Day on the second Sunday in March. This is your opportunity to introduce your friends to Unity. Delicious food will be served following the 9.30 and 11.30 services. I would now like to invite to the platform, Leslie. Well, I got the message about headbands, but didn't read it quite right. But anyway, close enough. It's close enough. It's close enough. Speaking of that, about text, I'm gonna, you've heard everything about the crab feed. It's next Saturday. The last today is the last day to buy tickets. But I thought I'd read this instead. This is what I send to a family who are not Unity people who've come to the crab feed for three or four years. I said, good morning, crab feed next Saturday. Still planning to come and enjoy? Let me know. Same place, same time, same fun, same great, group, same great group of people, same great food, same wonderful raffle baskets, same marvelous dessert auctions, some, same great music, Leslie. And she wrote back, good morning, Leslie. That sounds great. Let me check with my same group, and I'll let you know. <laughs> so there you go. That says it all. I'm out on the patio. Today is last day to buy tickets. So come and have a great same time. Find details of these and other wonderful activities in your bulletin and on our website. I invite you now to greet those immediately around you.
Well, the music was fabulous, and anybody have a suspicion that some of them have actually walked the walk? Yes. <laughs> Except I know you're all too young for that to be possible, but yeah. <laughs> oh, so I had a fascinating experience this week. I opened up a letter from my church. <laughs> it was from the minister. <laughs> telling me that I was going to retire in uh, uh, September. And I thought, well, that's kind of an interesting experience. Uh, so I thought, well, should I, should I talk about that? And the truth is, we have so many wonderful months between now and then. Uh, it's just one of those different things, that's, uh, distant things that's going to happen. And tonight at the town hall, we'll talk about all the things that are part of that. But what I realized this is really about is very important to all of us because it's about the experience of guidance. That's what directs our lives. That's what takes us through changes. And so I wanted, wanted to just share with you a little bit about the experience of guidance, kind of how, uh, how it's unfolded in my learning. So I want to uh, uh, share with you a couple experiences where I actually listened to it. Um, one of the ways that I have found encouragement to listen to spiritual guidance when it came was by not listening to it. And uh, so I, I came to recognize there's a real difference in what happens in our lives. But and there's a beautiful understanding you, as a spiritual being, as a child of God, that the intelligence and the order and the love that unfolds life itself is there with each of us in every moment. And it would take us through every change with grace and ease. 
And it will guide us how that can take place. One of the, one of the times when I, I ended up really turning to the experience of, of guidance because I was at a place of confusion and even though I'm, I was fairly intelligent and well-educated and could think about things analytically and fairly deeply, I didn't have a clue what to do. Anybody had that kind of thing in your life? Okay, yeah, well, this, this was actually in a relationship. So I, I was in a relationship with this, this wonderful woman. I loved her very much, and I had a real question. Was this a relationship that was going to grow throughout my life and we could be married and it was, we would have this beautiful experience? Or was it a wonderful experience for right now and we both had other directions to go and uh, if, if we got married, we would essentially be fine that in those bumps of life, we weren't the right ones to be there with each other. Now, I had that question for me, but I also had a, a little daughter who was about three or four at that point, and it made a whole lot of difference. Was this woman, the woman who was really in, had been drawn into her life to be her mother for her life? And that was even more important than what was there for me. So what we did was we took a hold of the, of the spiritual knowledge that we had at that time, because I understood I'm, I'm a spiritual being. Now at the time, I just kind of glanced at it from the side. I was early in my experience of, of law and... Uh, so I, w I was kind of learning a new world. But I had, I'd loved that spiritual study stuff. So I'd, you know, I'd learned, well, okay, there are ways that we, we make this connection with spirit. There's this beautiful teaching of Jesus that goes, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be given unto you. And I understood that to mean that if, I'd, if I would focus in and make that connection, that that love and that care would take care and, and guide that part of my life. So what we did was we created an affirmation together. And in that affirmation, what we affirmed was that if we were really right for each other and we'd come here to create a life together, that that would become clear and we could know that and we could say yes and it would unfold beautifully. And... If that was not the case, that that would be clear. And we could part in love and harmony. That was what we created in our affirmation, that we would be guided to know it, and then it would be clear. And occasionally we shared that together, but we made the commitment in our in our own time of prayer and meditation to keep going back to this and keep affirming that and making it real for our lives. And then I remember the experience. It was probably close to maybe two years uh, or maybe a year and a half after we had created that together. I was visiting my parents in uh, Jackson Hole, Wyoming. I was standing before a beautiful window looking out on the Grove Mountain Range. And suddenly, I knew that it was right for us to get married and go forward together. A moment before, I wasn't even thinking about her. But in that moment, I knew. And I, now, I had had many thoughts both ways. So it wasn't thinking it was knowing. You know the difference? Yeah. Okay, you've had that. And I knew. Now with that knowing, 
the questions disappeared. And I understood. Now, the truth is, I, I went back and I, and I asked her to marry me, and it had been so long since we'd addressed it, she thought I was joking. <laughs> <laughs> but she said yes, and we, this June is our 40th wedding anniversary. But there are points in our lives that are important. And in that, there is an intelligence and a path of your soul that will express itself to you and guide you to move forward in that in the most effective way. Because you are so loved, love guides your way every step along the way. And we have the freedom not to listen to it. But it's there. And so what I have found is so meaningful to my life has been learning how to listen to that, how to connect with it. Now, when I look at the experience of, of the, the question of a, a lifetime relationship, what I realized, well, I, I took the affirmative prayer. I had I'd learned uh, that part. But I also realized there was something else present in terms of that seeking first, that connection with spirit. I had been uh, intentionally meditating at that point for probably about three, maybe four years. And it had become a part of my life. Now, I won't say it was a regular, consistent part of my life, but it was something that I went to uh, uh, again and again because it was helpful and supportive and it was part of my growing my relationship with that spiritual self. That's what we do in meditation. We just kind of hang out for a moment in stillness with our spiritual self. You know, and that's how you, that's how you get to know someone, is you hang out with them. But we're just doing that with us without the mind and everything getting in the way. But it builds that relationship. So that relationship was already there as a foundation. So when we then went to the prayer to call upon that, and I was also aware that that was not a simple question. We were both at points of great change and growth in our lives. And so I was comfortable waiting until it was right, it was clear. And with either way, I was sincerely willing to get the answer, not select an answer I wanted spirit to give me. That guidance. Now, what I have found in my life is that it works a lot better if I regularly check in. And so I have regular times when I, I take a time and I, I spend some time in silence. And because I now have grown in the knowledge of how the heart lets us connect more clearly and more directly into that guidance, I'm able to use that to go there and really ask questions about my life. So I was at, at one of those, those times and I asked, what, what about this work that I do? What about my, my service here? And I got very clearly the instruction that um, within, within the next couple of years that would be coming to an end. And this was some time ago. And that because I needed to go on into other paths of service that were before me. And so, so I accepted that, and when I, when I did that, uh, when I got that instruction, I uh, connected with our board and shared that with them, and so they've had some time to put in places, uh, plans. And one of the interesting things to me was in, uh, I asked a question I already knew the answer to. Okay, and the, the question that I asked was, did I have another book to write? And I'd thought about it very diligently, and I'd looked at the different things, and I realized, no, I didn't. Uh, that the things that needed to be said were said brilliantly by wonderful people. Uh, I didn't need to do mine, but there was a question, so I asked it, and the answer was, yes, you do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, 
But it was given. It was given what it was and why it was. And again, the, the things that are before you in your life are important. You're here for a purpose. Your soul has a desire in what it will embrace and touch and grow and how you will meet life. And the guidance to do that is there. We but take that time and make that connection to really ask. Now, what I also noticed was, having shared this with the board, we, you know, we put some tentative timelines and did some figuring and the steps you have to do, just having plenty of time to look ahead. And, and every time I thought about the when we were talking about, I was uncomfortable. Now, uncomfortable is one of those nice early ways that spirit kind of tugs at your shirt tail and says, come here. <laughs> and uh, what I've noticed is if I ignore that long enough, it gets more uncomfortable. So I took and just went into a, a, a time of prayer and, and, and went in and made that connection with the heart and asked. And it got specific. I said, no, not generally about then, then. I said, okay, and then I realized, well, there was something else I wanted to work with or experience, so I went back and negotiated. <laughs> and said, okay, yes, this, no, that. Okay. So, so then that, that, was, that was clear. And, and when, what you know, again, in the experience of knowing, remember that experience, the argument fades from the mind because something greater is present. You know. You understand intuitively because it is you, that highest intelligence and wisdom of your being, that has said yes. The soul that you are has said yes. Go forward this way. What I have for you is already present. Now that's an understanding that that love, that infinite divine love, guides our way. It guides it all the time, every day. It's always there. Now, the truth is, I don't listen to it all the time. I really don't expect anyone to. But I do know it's helpful to check in. And it's always there. Now, sometimes it takes a little more effort on my part to get out of the things that I've already figured out and actually get open. But it's always there, and it is such love and such care. Now, I've, I shared with you these situations which were about looking forward into something in the future to make a, make a decision. And we all have that. We have changes coming in our lives. We get a sense of change coming or we're at a point and we want to check in and say, okay, where am I now? What are the next steps? And that, that love guides your way. It's there for you. So I want to share with you a different experience. Now, this is, a, this is an experience of the change happening in the moment. Instead of looking ahead, what happens when suddenly, oh, in this moment, life just got different. You've been in that moment, <laughs> okay? So I, I want to share the experience of, of Lonnie, who uh, Lonnie uh, guides our wonderful youth and family program. And, uh, and Lonnie has a deep commitment to her spiritual self. And it's why she loves to share it so much with the, with the children. It's, it's so very, very rich and alive, that relationship for her. And she works at uh, Whole Foods. And so she, she went to work one day, and a couple of the, the people she works under called her into the office and, and asked her about something that had taken place. And uh, so she, ex she explained what happened and realized, whoops, she had made a mi mistake there. And the people responded and said, well, with that mistake, we have to let you go. So suddenly, in a moment, she was fired and her job was gone. 
That's change. Her response, and even as she was sharing it with me, her response was this. She went right into her heart. And she focused on the love that she knows is there for her. And when she did that, she was aware, first of all, these people were wonderful people. They really treasured her. They'd had wonderful times together. What a difficult thing they were in to have to fire someone they cared about. And uh, if you know Lana, you know everybody in the place had to be in love with her. She's just an absolutely marvelous being. What a very difficult thing. And she knew knew that she was cared for. So her response was to say to them, I understand you have to do what you have to do. Don't worry, I'm cared for. I know that. Now, interesting thing happened when she did that. First of all, have you ever had a chance to be a victim and decided not to do it? That's kind of fun, isn't it? Say, whoa, I'm not going to do that one this time. Yeah. <laughs> but there's a power that takes us out of that because we aren't. <laughs> but with that, with that knowing, was a fascinating understanding. She, she remembered when she had asked the guidance about going to work there, it had been very specific. Yes. Take the job. You'll be there for two years. It was two years and two weeks to the day that that happened. So, in fact, she'd known all along it was coming to an end. Now, had she consciously embraced that? No. But did she understand spirit had brought something into her life and then taken it away because it was time to go on. In the changes before us, we are, we are guided. Love guides your way. Every moment, every step. Love guides my way. Say it with me. Love guides my way. Feel that love there. Again, love guides my way. Again, love guides my way. Beautiful, beautiful experience of that presence, that guidance. Whatever you need to know is already given. Ask. Go to that spiritual self. Your friends can't tell you. They're just going to tell you their things. Okay. Go to this beautiful wisdom that is unfolding the magnificent spiritual being that you are, and ask. And what we find is that the response not only brings to us knowing, but it brings the experience of love, for that is what guides our life. Thank you, Reverend David. Your messages continue to guide us every week. And now I invite you to take a connection card from the seat pocket in front of you. <coughs> With this card, we each have the opportunity to tap into that powerful, pray, the powerful presence of prayer moving and flowing in and through our community by submitting a prayer request for ourselves and our loved ones. And for that personal experience of prayer, our heart ministers will be available following this service. Our heart ministers are wearing the lavender stoles. You may also leave a prayer request at any time on our website. 
our spiritual focus of the week is love guides my way. The ushers will receive your card with the offering toward the end of the music. It is now time for our prosperity celebration. For credit card donations, there are envelopes attached to the, clip the clipboards in the back of each chair. If you are following us from home and would like to leave a donation, please select the Donate Now button on our Watch Live page. Thank you. Unity's co-founder, American mystic Charles Fillmore, said, God is a mighty stream of substance, and you are the tributary of that stream. Blessing the substance increases its flow. I invite you now to take your tithe offering in your hand and know that God is the source of all your good. Please repeat our affirmation with me. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God.
right, embrace these beautiful little beings with your heart and let's share our blessing together. Children, you are love, special and important. The light of God shines through you. And let's uh, join our choir in singing our prayer of protection. and the peace in the earth right now. So let it shine and have fun. <laughs>